we are aware about the term strain so related to the term strain there is another term that is called poisson's ratio so we start with the topic poisson's ratio so when we talk about strain we know that it is change in length divided by original length but there are two component that are longitudinal and lateral strain so let's talk about this bar that is acted by the force p so along the axis there is change in length that is delta so the longitudinal strain is given by delta by l as we know that its volume remains constant so due to that its diameter changes so let's its initial diameter is d and the change in diameter is delta d so lateral strain that is in the direction perpendicular to the axis or the direction of force that is given by delta d by d so this change in diameter is due to the force axial force so that means there are two strains produced in the body due to one force or you can say one direction force so it is called axial or longitudinal strain when we consider the deformation along the axis or along the direction of force the strain that is produced in the direction perpendicular to the action of force is called lateral strain so the relation between the longitudinal and lateral strain is given by poisson's ratio so it is the ratio of lateral strain to axial strain so let's suppose i'm having a bar which is having px force in the direction x so let's make a table so here i am writing force strain in x direction strain in y direction so let's assume that this is x direction and this is y direction so when force is in x direction that is px then stress is equal to sigma x that is px by a so this cross section area is ax so due to sigma x that is sigma x is stress in the direction x sigma x is normal stress in the direction x when we have the force in x axis so due to sigma x the strain in x direction is sigma x by e so this is from the formula by hooke's law that is stress by strain is e and we also know that lateral strain by axial strain is poisson's ratio so now in this case lateral strain is so in y direction the strain will be
hence in the y direction the strain will be equal to mu sigma x by e so i put in this column in y direction the strain is sigma x by e now i am putting it negative sign why negative because when in x direction the length will change that is increase in length so the sample will the bar will be like this and in the direction y so this is y direction so this is y direction you can see it is its width is decreasing its width width is decreasing so that's why i put negative sign here now consider the force in y direction that is py so due to py the stress is sigma y that is equal to py by ay so ay is area of cross section perpendicular to y axis so now sigma y is the stress that is in the direction of y and along the direction of the force so it is a normal stress now this force py will or you can say sigma y will generate the strain in the y direction that will be axial for this case so in y direction that is axial strain so that will be equal to sigma y by e so similarly it will produce the lateral strain and that lateral strain will be again minus mu sigma y by e as i explained in the case of x axis force so here when the force will act in the direction x sorry y when the force will act in the direction y there is an increase in the length along y axis that's why it is positive and there is decrease in the length along x axis so this is the decrease so that's why i put negative here so now the net strain will be given by will be given by in x direction it will be given by sigma x by e minus mu times sigma y by e and in y direction the net strain will be given by sigma y by e minus mu times sigma x by e that is the sum of these so this is how we consider the concept of lateral strain and longitudinal strain for finding out the net strain we will see this in the case of three dimension forces also this is x y and z so in the x direction let there be the force px so due to px on this block on the yellow block the px force is on the yellow block due to which its length increases in x direction so again i can write that strain in x direction 
is sigma x by e and strain in y direction due to x is now you can see that there is decrease in the dimension along y axis so it is minus nu times sigma x y y and also in z direction there is minus So this is the effect of sigma x in all x, y and z directions. Let's assume that there is another force in z direction, Pz. Pz. So in x axis, it will reduce the length and the strain will be in x direction, it will be negative because if I stretch it in x direction, obviously my this dimension is going to reduce. So that's for negative. In y direction, it is also negative. So however, in di z direction, it is increasing the length. So I'm putting plus sign. So let's assume another force that is in direction y. So when Py is tensile, it will obviously reduce the dimensions in x coordinate. So it is minus nu times sigma y by e. In x direction, it is going to increase the length mu sigma y by e. In z direction, it is again reducing the dimensions. So this is how we consider the effect of three dimension stresses in the direction x, y and z. So here we use the concept of Poisson's ratio. So if I rearrange the terms, you can see these are the basic formulas. So this is how we get strain in all the three directions. Thank you students.